The Hot and Cold Summer by Joanna Hurwitz, illustrated by Mary Grand Pre. Best friends Rory and Derek have summer plans that don't include a surprise visitor, a girl named Bolivia. The boys make a pact not to speak to Bolivia, but soon find her hard to avoid. Derek and Bolivia become friends, but Rory stubbornly tries to stay away from her. Derek goes away to summer camp, leaving Rory and Bolivia behind. The two become friends, even after Rory mistakenly lets Bolivia's pet parrot, Lucette, out of her cage, and breaks two toes trying to catch her. Now Derek is returning from camp. Will the three of them be able to stay friends? Rory sat on a lounge chair in his backyard, hurting in two places. His poor toes hurt him because he had forgotten and stepped down hard on them a few minutes ago. The other hurt was in the pit of his stomach. It wasn't a stomach ache exactly; it was the queasy feeling he had before an arithmetic test. But that was silly because it was still summer vacation, and Rory didn't have to worry about arithmetic tests for weeks. What he was worrying about was that Derek would be returning home in a few minutes. Rory had been thinking a lot about Derek. The boys hadn't even spoken to each other for two days before Derek left for camp. And even though Derek had sent him a postcard right at the beginning, perhaps he had changed his mind, or maybe he had made so many new friends since then that he wouldn't need Rory anymore. Rory moved his toes gingerly and thought about how it was before, before the summer and before Bolivia. The two boys had so much fun together, and they had never argued about anything. Now he knew that Derek had been right. Bolivia was fun too, even if she was a girl and had been foisted on them. He hadn't been very fair to her when she first came to Woodside, but how could he explain to Derek that he had changed his mind? Probably now that Derek was back, Bolivia would go bike riding or swimming with him, and Rory would just have to sit still and rest his toes. So Rory sat pretending to read the new comics that Mister Golding had bought for him, but really he was listening for the Curry's car to drive up with Derek inside. He waited anxiously when he heard Derek's father pull into his driveway. The car doors opened and banged shut, and Rory sat holding his breath. Would Derek come looking for him? Minutes passed. I was right, thought Rory sadly. He didn't come running right over. He doesn't want to be my friend any more. Fifteen minutes later, Derek came running into the dun yard. He was tanned and taller than ever, and he was carrying his old comics. I heard all about your foot," he said. "I thought you would want to borrow these." Derek sat on the ground next to the lounge chair. "I can't stay long," he apologized. "My parents are taking me out to dinner, but tomorrow it will be like old times, being back home and doing things with you." "I can't go to the pool or anything," said Rory sadly. "You'll probably want to go swimming." "No," said Derek. Shaking his head and standing up, I haven't seen you in a long time. And besides, I did plenty of swimming at camp. The next day, Derek and Bolivia and Rory spent most of the afternoon assembling a five hundred piece puzzle on the bridge table that had served as their lemonade stand. Rory and Bolivia told Derek about their business venture. We made six dollars and five cents," said Rory proudly. And we didn't sell even a single cup of lemonade," said Bolivia, "except to each other," Rory reminded her. And Ed, we still haven't come up with a good way to spend the money," said Rory. It was upstairs in his bedroom, underneath his T-shirts in a drawer. Bolivia said she trusted him with it, even after he had opened Lucette's cage. When the puzzle was completed, they sat around trying to think of things to do. Derek got a deck of cards and showed them a couple of tricks that he had learned from one of the kids at camp. Gradually, the afternoon passed. Mrs. Dunn called out the window to them all. 
How would you like me to order a pizza for the three of you for supper? Great, said Derek, answering for everyone. I bet I could eat a whole pie by myself, he bragged to Bolivia and Rory. That's eight slices. You couldn't eat that much, said Bolivia. Yes, I could, Derek insisted. I could eat a whole pie, too, said Rory. I'm bigger than you, said Derek. You couldn't eat as much as me. Size has nothing to do with it, said Bolivia, taking Rory's side. Some very big people have small appetites and vice versa. You're crazy, Derek said. Hey, Ma, Rory called to his mother, who had come out into the yard. Would you order two pizzas? You don't need two, said his mother. One is plenty. I've called the store, and they will deliver one in half an hour. I'm going to cut up some vegetables for you to eat with it. She went back into the house. Too bad, said Derek. If we had two pies, I could eat a whole one and prove to you that I could do it. I've got an idea, said Bolivia. What? asked Rory and Derek. Let's order a second pie with our lemonade money. That's a great idea, said Derek. No fair, said Rory. I could eat a whole pie, too. You guys are both crazy, said Bolivia. I bet neither of you could eat a whole pie, but I'm willing to let you try. I know that there'll be plenty left for me. Are you sure you want to risk that? asked Derek. They'll be cold. That is, the slices that Derek doesn't finish, I know I won't leave any, said Rory. All right, show-offs. I'll go and call for the second pizza, said Bolivia. I'll tell them to deliver it when they come, and I'll tell my aunt that I'm eating here. She rushed into the house to make the call. Derek looked at Rory. Where are you going to put all that pizza? He asked him. In my mouth, the same as you said Rory. He started clearing off the table. We'll need this for eating on, he said. You better go into my house and get the money to pay for the pizza. He instructed Derek where to find the money in his room. By the time the delivery truck pulled up 45 minutes later, Mrs. Dunn had brought out napkins, a pitcher of grape juice, and a plate of carrot, green pepper, and celery sticks. Neither Rory nor Derek touched any of the vegetables. They were saving room for the pizza. Two pies? asked Mrs. Dunn when the delivery boy came up the walk with two boxes. There must be a mistake. I only ordered one. Dunn, 26 Dog Lake Lane? said the fellow. It says two pies here, he said, holding out a slip. The second one is mine, said Bolivia rushing forward to pay with the lemonade money that Derek had given her. You'll never be able to eat all that, said Mrs. Dunn sharply. It was my idea, said Bolivia apologetically. I made a bet with Derek and Rory. Rory knew that even if she were annoyed, his mother wouldn't scold Bolivia. He was right. Instead, she said, Edna is having scrambled eggs for supper because I'm fixing chicken livers, for Mr. Dunn and myself. If there is a slice left, she would love... There won't be any left, said Rory. Sorry, Mrs. Dunn, said Derek. I'll bring it inside to her, promised Bolivia. Stop talking and open the boxes, said Rory. The pizza will be cold. There wasn't room for two pizza pies on the card table. I can rest my box right on the ground, said Derek. It will be empty in a few minutes anyhow. Okay. On your mark, get set, go, shouted Bolivia. She reached for a carrot stick and began chewing on it as she watched the competitor. I'm sorry that you won't be getting any, Bolivia, said Derek, chewing away on his first slice. I'm really going to pig out today. Don't worry about me, she told him. No fair, Rory, said Derek, pointing to the crust that his friend had thrown into the box as he grabbed his second slice. I never eat those, complained Rory. They're too boring. That's cheating, said Bolivia. At least in an eating contest, I never eat them either. Derek reached for his third slice. He was getting thirsty. 
So he stopped for a minute to gulp down some juice. He took a deep breath. This is living, he said. Imagine some people prefer chicken livers. They all made a face. Rory wiped his fingers on his shorts and reached for his third slice, too. See, I'm keeping up with you, he said to Derek, even when I eat the crusts. Finishing that, he reached for his fourth slice. It was the slice he always wanted and never could have. Unfortunately, it didn't taste quite as good as he had imagined it would. Derek began eating his fourth slice, too. Maybe we shouldn't be such pigs, said Rory. Derek, don't you think we should each donate at least one slice to Bolivia? He stopped eating for a minute. She was the one who had the idea of selling lemonade. You're right, said Derek. It's only fair. He pointed to the box on the ground. Here, Bolivia, take a piece of my pizza. Oh, I wouldn't think of depriving you, said Bolivia. She was chewing on a piece of green pepper. Rory reached for his fifth slice. There were still three more slices in the box. Bolivia, he insisted. Fair's fair. You worked hard selling the lemonade. You forgot we didn't sell any lemonade, said Bolivia. Most of the money was the reward you got for finding Mrs. Tillinghast's coin purse. So by rights, you should eat all the pizza. She smiled and crunched down on a piece of celery. Too many vegetables will make you too healthy, said Derek. Have a slice of pizza, please. The nicest thing about eating celery is that chewing it makes a good noise said Bolivia, munching away. I guess lying around all day because of my broken toes has kept me from having my usual appetite, Rory admitted. He was still nibbling at his fifth slice. He wasn't certain that he would be able to finish. Confess that you're full, said Bolivia. I'm not full. Are you full, Derek? Rory asked. Nope, said Derek. He was holding on to his fifth slice, too. But I sure am not hungry, either. Well, maybe I will do you guys a favor, said Bolivia. She reached into Derek's box and took out a slice. Hey, what about mine? asked Rory. Bolivia took a slice from Rory's box and placed it on top of the slice she was already holding. The tomato and cheese from each slice stuck together and the plain crusts were on the outside. I'm having a pizza sandwich, she said as she began eating the two slices together. Even though she was eating two slices at once, she finished them quickly, but she didn't eat the end crusts. Hey, you're supposed to eat those, said Rory, pointing to the crusts that she put down on the table. Why? I'm not in the contest, said Bolivia. Aren't you guys eating any more, she asked. They both shook their heads. Bolivia fixed herself another pizza sandwich. Delicious, she said. I like it better cold. That way I don't burn my mouth. She finished her second sandwich except for the crusts and reached for another slice. Aren't you going to make another sandwich? asked Rory. Nope, said Bolivia. The last slice is for Edna. I promised to save it for her. She began chewing away on her fifth slice. Well, I guess it's a three-way tie, said Bolivia, wiping her hands on a napkin. We each ate five slices. Yeah, you didn't eat your crusts, pointed out Rory. That's right, said Derek. At least the honor of boys against girls should be kept intact. True, agreed Bolivia, but you didn't eat any salad. She pushed the plate of vegetables toward Derek and Rory, but both boys waved her away. Neither had any room at all. Derek, take this slice inside to Edna, said Bolivia, and I'll put these crusts to good use. She picked up the crusts from her five slices. What are you going to do with them? asked Rory. I'm going to bring them to Lisette, said Bolivia. In all her life, she never had as many pizza crusts as she wanted. She's going to break her record tonight, too. Don't talk about pizza records, said Rory, who felt as if pizza was coming out of his ears. 
I may never be able to eat again. But though his stomach and his toes hurt him, he felt very good. It was great to have friends like Derek and Bolivia. Think critically.